Daylight Hours. Hello, folks. Welcome in. Welcome back. I'm the one, the only, I am Daytona Beach's only Hobo Tom. And, wow, that was interesting. Um, I just kind of caught up on Raw. I had to work last night. Get some other stuff done. And, and I just realized this room is entirely differently lit. In the daylight. Natural light versus artificial light. I always like natural light. Better, but I'm not here to talk about my lack of production facilities here in the hobo office. I'm here to talk about some Monday Night Raw. And more specifically, the Raw after the Royal Rumble. It was weird. <laughs> a lot of good, a lot of bad, a lot of a lot of a lot of stuff. They seem to have a lot of wrestling in this show. Wow, they really did. Hmm. All right, I took a lot of notes. Let's start this show off, folks. Starts off, um, Drew McIntyre comes out, gives a promo. Drew McIntyre, ah, oh, the manliest man of them all. Says, I'm feeling so good. He wants to fight. I'm feeling on top of the world. But the two people that come out kind of saddens me a little bit. The OC, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson show up. He says, this sounds like a challenge. And Drew's like, I'm game. I'll take both of you on. <laughs> and he does. And actually, for the most part, it's a handicap match, but Carl and Anderson and Luke Gallows have to tag in. Carl, Mr. Anderson, very bad idea about slapping Drew McIntyre. That just made him more upset. Uh, then eventually, Drew McIntyre, after like getting woke up by that slap by Carl Anderson, again, why would you ever wake the sleeping giant or poke the sleeping bear? Not good. Not smart. Either. But uh, so Carl Anderson he ate the headbutt. Poor Carl. He was doing so good for a while. Came to WWE, chilling with AJ. His hot Asian wife likes the beach. His kids are enjoying the States. And he gets her a jobber. Because for the most part, Drew McIntyre beat up both, pretty convincingly, both Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson. Is the OC now the jobber to the stars? I don't know. Uh, the match itself was a ham sandwich of a match. But what happened at the end was really cool. Brock Lesnar was pissed off. Because remember, the night before, Drew McIntyre was the one who officially eliminated Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar wanted to go through everyone and say, you know what, I'm taking WrestleMania off because I beat everyone known to challenge me. Or he'd handpick some, some scrub. But you know what? That did not happen this time. Because, again, Drew McIntyre eliminated Brock Lesnar. And everyone's saying, na 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 Hey, goodbye. So that, <laughs> he was probably having a blast. He's like, what are these people? Yeah. But Brock came back, literally just F5 Drew McIntyre, left the ring. Says he's going to be, because again, hey, geez, but. She has to get her out of time sooner. Probably saw her sneak in the room. She'll probably sneak out, wander around a little bit more. Rub up against me. Most of the one I'm doing hour, but that's okay. But yeah, that's cool to see. And that'll be a, actually a really good WrestleMania match. Who knows? They might put the belt on Drew. I'd be cool with that. Then the next match, we have Rey Mysterio taking on MVP. MVP's back? I thought he had uh, like a long hiatus. Oh, there she goes. You see the hobo office. And let me hear. No, it's just me, folks. I'm just hearing stuff. That was weird. But, um, so we had Ramus here taking on MVP. And wow, it's been a while since I've seen MVP. I don't think, I think this is the first time I saw him. Uh, for the most part, this was a pretty competitive match. Uh, pretty quick match. There were a lot of there was a lot of wrestling on the show. 
a lot of really quick stuff. Um, between the wrestling and kind of the recaps, it was it was a good. It was the the first part of the show felt really good. The middle part felt like a slog though. Always does. The end was oh, the end was very good, but I'll get to that shortly. So again, this was a fairly competitive match. Again, the people were very appreciative of MVP. They're saying. You still got it. Oh, he's good to hear it. A very appreciative crowd. And Envy with that, oh, that big boot. Gee, Rey Mysterio looks so small. And it's really funny to watch Rey Mysterio bounce off, literally the uh, rebound off the bottom rope. It's just weird to see. Because I know, as a wrestler, when I was taught how to run the rope, you do want to kind of go against both the top and the bottom rope. Mainly if the top rope broke, you could still kind of brace yourself against the bottom rope. And you put your arm up and you kind of hit it on your side. That way in case the bottom rope broke, you can still catch yourself. And you're sideways, so you just so instead of falling flat on your back on Pack your head on the pavement. You kind of fall on your side, and you kind of can brace yourself a little bit better. Still not ideal, but again, ropes are weird things, and especially here in Daytona Beach, when the ropes get slick from humidity and stuff. I've seen all kinds of stuff happen on the ropes with some people, and they're like, "Oh, that's not good." But again, it's just weird to see that. Uh, again, Ray hit the barricade rana. That's what I'm calling this move when he sends someone into the barricade from the hurricane. That's a barricade rana. Yeah, you did the seed senton. I'll tell you what, this was kind of, this was a fun match. I was shocked. It's always fun and oh MVP had that drop power sign where he picks him up and just falls forward. And then he does a baller elbow. However he does that. That's that's impressive. Um eventually Ray Mysterio did pick up the win. Good for him, but you know what? MVP, you still got it. And this match. Got a cheeseburger. Then there's a whole edge recap. That's that's kind of the big thing. That'll be one, that's probably going to be the celebrity-ish match come this WrestleMania, which I'm not going to because it's way too expensive, and I probably won't be able to get the day off. Because I'm kind of using up all my days off to go work at the racetrack. So, that's okay. And then, April-ish, do need to do all that work to do. That's like prime time earning months for me. Uh, so, there's the edge recap. That's going to be cool to see. I will hopefully catch that. Probably not the pre-show. <laughs> that starts at like... Five... I don't know, it all depends on my work schedule. Some days I do tend to work until 7.30, but we'll see. I can always miss a little WrestleMania. That's I haven't heard anything. I do want to see Triple Mania, though. I've seen a so bad it's good Triple Mania. I've seen actually a really good Triple Mania. And I want to see if, if Triple A is consistent or not. Again, that'll probably be live stream because they did it on Twitch. When it's on Twitch, I can do it. So we'll see what happens. Then we have Alistair Black taking on, I don't know, some job where they announced the same. I missed it. Alistair Black taking on, I don't know. Uh, it was like three moves, maybe five. Alistair Black came out at a different promo. Again, it's three moves against the jobber. It's not making me care about Alistair Black. The match itself was really a can of soup. But what Alistair Black has to do, instead of having pick a fight with him, knock on his door, he just has to go to the ring, grab a baseball bat, saying, I want competition. Just like the Macho Man held WCW hostage for like a whole night. Like, there was a match, the Macho Man showed up. Nope. 
you're not having a match. Like the wrestlers, they like, but we want our match. Macho Man beat them both up. Referee said, Macho Man beat up the ref. Tossed him out. Got in the ring, picked up a chair, sat in the ring. I want Hulk Hogan, yeah. Uh, and then eventually other wrestlers would show up. Hey, you can't do this. Beat them up, toss them out. Sting gave him a baseball bat. And Macho Man proceeded to beat up people's baseball bat until he until he felt satisfied enough. That was great. That was old school WCW. Then we had to close out the first hour. It was Seth Rollins and Buddy Murphy taking on Kevin Owens and Samoa Joe. Um, both hit a promo. Kevin Owens and Samoa Joe. Oh, they're so good at that. Joe should just... If he ever leaves the wrestling business, he has to become like part of the table team, the announce team, because he's so good on the mic. Kevin Owens could do the same thing. Uh, Samoa Joe, wow. Samoa Joe's way too strong and too big for both Seth Rollins and Buddy Murphy. Poor Buddy Murphy. Uh, KO. <laughs> KO got in the ring. <laughs> told Seth Rollins to suck it. Uh, that got a big pop. Kevin Owens is Kevin Owens is so good with his crowd. He he ticks every box, and he's also a fat bastard, just like Samoa Joe. That's always good to see him. The fattest bastard right here. Uh, again, very classic tag team isolation. Buddy Murphy just took an absolute beating from Kevin Owens and Samoa Joe until Sus finally tags in. And then Joe, like, hits some dive. And, I don't know. <laughs> it was funny. Buddy Murphy went to climb up to the top rope to do, like, a splash. So, <laughs> Joe, <laughs> he literally just was walking in the ring. <laughs> he just, like, watched Buddy Murphy jump from the top rope down. <laughs> like, turn around. He's like, huh? And Kevin Owens just said, <laughs> Kevin Owens is I don't know if that was planned or if you missed the spot, but that was just funny. To make up for it, <laughs> Kevin was just like laughing. He's like, How do you look like a fool? Uh, he's gonna show you their nose cell. He's like, I'm not taking a bump from him yet. Samoa Joe. We're not worthy, Samoa Joe. We're not worthy, Samoa Joe. We're not worthy, Samoa Joe. Joe. Joe, do do Joe, 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 do do Joe, 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 do 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 Joe, 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 do 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 Joe, 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 Joe's the best. His Godzilla theme music suits him perfectly. Small, small. He's just great. Um, Joe eventually did a dive. Took out Buddy Murphy, but also took out himself. And for some reason, Kevin Owens actually did the Swanton Bomb. There's only one person who should ever do the Swanton, and his name is Jeff Hardy. Until Jeff Hardy, even though he's not there, it, I think someone else from AEW also hit the Swanton. Every so often, I think another wrestler from NWA hit it. That has to be one of those protected moves that. Only certain wrestlers can do, only because it's so special. It's like the Canadian Destroyer. Everyone's doing a Canadian Destroyer now. It kind of waters down the value, especially once you start seeing people kick out of said Canadian Destroyer. When Kota Ibushi hit the. When Kota Ibushi got Canadian Destroyed by the blow up sex law, that was just pure comic genius. The crowd loved it. And it's only a happened once, which makes it special. When it happens all the time, it's not so special. Uh, eventually, Seth eats a stunner, but Buddy Murphy gets the roll-up victory. And Seth Rollins and Buddy Murphy retain their championship. It was good. I'll tell you what. I like the fat, I like the antics of it. This was a surf and turf match.
And then, and, and I saw this, I'm like, oh, no, not again. It was Andrade Cien Almas taking on Umberto Carrillo. And I'll tell you what, Umberto has a mean streak going, and I like it. I like the fact that this match was different than the other match. Um, Zelina Vega still looks like she stole a full-figured ice skating outfit from Rey Mysterio because it had a big cross on it. She either stole it from him or oh, Sin Cara used to used to have that kind of design all the time too. Zelina Vega, no, <laughs> he might. Oh God, no! I just thought of something I could do, and it could be. Either really bad or really good. And not and by really bad, I don't mean like the bad that makes you laugh, but just terrible. Um I'll 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 get to that in a moment. That was a bad that was a terrible thought. Now Bruno jumps El Idolo with a drop kick and wow, he just goes to town on Andrade. Andrade's like, Whoa, what's going on? I think Andrade realized he's actually in a fight. And I'll tell you what, there was a lot of weird stuff going on. Not so much in this match, but this whole show. Um, uh, he just starts flying. Again, Andrade kind of humbled Umberto. He didn't miss an East, but Umberto just flies all over the place. That's great. He was amazing to watch in NXT. He's, I wish they would just let him go. Let these two have a hair versus title mask. Hair versus Hair versus title match, yeah. And for WrestleMania, that would be amazing. That would be really good. Umberto would look weird, I guess, with a shaved head. So you never know. Umberto is a very darn handsome man, folks. Uh, then Andrade has a new move. He has like a standing reverse Boston Crab. Oh, I can feel my ligaments go. The smart, the smart Andrade again. Um, Umberto went off for an acai moonsault, which means you go off the second rope. Once he got on the second rope, Andrade very quickly got up and kicked the ropes, causing Umberto to lose his balance and fall. So again, very smart. However, uh, Umberto did hit his Aztec press, I think. And Selena Vega interfered, like blatantly, just went in the ring, made the save like a tag team match. If the death death hit it, because if the DQ hit it, but boy, this is a crab cake and mock tender steak. Tough and tough mats. And that made Umberto mad because he won, but. Because the belt can only change hands via pinfall or submission, he didn't get the belt, but he won. He was furious. I don't know. Angry and Bruce is a pretty cool guy. Because he took all of his frustration on Andrade, killed off the mat, hammerlock DDT Andrade onto said floor. I don't know if it's concrete or not. I forget what arena they were in, but you can just kind of see, like, map directions, where to put stuff. And Umberto looks genuinely upset. <laughs> and, wow, they could have had this match on the pay-per-view, during the pay-per-view. Put Lacey Evans and Bailey on the pre-show. And I'll tell you what, this is another case of where TV is better than pay-per-views. It brings the question, why bother paying for it? I don't, but that's a whole other issue. But if you're going to get better matches on TV, why bother paying for it? Although the Royal Rumble this year was amazing. Well, it wasn't amazing. It was great. Amazing's that next level stuff. But again, the, the men's Royal Rumble was a flaming on match. I said that earlier. The women's match, minus who won was really fun, and up to the end, was good. The matches themselves, minus, I think, the one pre-show match. Well, yeah, the Andrade 
Andrade, Umberto, pre-show match, and the Lacey Evans Bailey match, they were fun. They forwarded stuff. The, to start off the, the show proper, the Baron Corbin Roman Reigns match was amazing. They did stuff. They didn't, oh, well, we have to bring it back to the week. No, I'm going to pin you on top of the dugout. Yes, 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 yes. Maybe my camera likes those natural lights. Who knows? Rick Flair, um, I'm not Rick Flair. Charlotte Flair comes out. Points to the WrestleMania sign for like an overly long period of time. Cuts a promo. Asuka comes out. I don't care. Evil Asuka and, and Mary Poppins, Kyrie Sane. She comes out with her umbrella. Easy peasy. Uh, I'll tell you what. Asuka, so this led to a match between Asuka and Charlotte Flair, but before the ref could get there, the Kabuki Warriors double suplex Charlotte Flair. Charlotte Flair did not look like she was going to go over that easily, though, too. They had to work. They, they actually powered her over. The first part of this match, most of this match felt like a shoot. I'm not too sure if Charlotte actually likes Asuka. Charlotte does this every so often. When she doesn't get her way, she either no-sells or it turns into what almost feels like a shoot. So it's weird. And those kicks of Asuka. Oh. They're vicious. And then, of course, match go match continues. It gets a little bit more like a wrestling match versus just a fight. Uh, you went to a wrestling match and you saw a fight. You went to a fight and you saw a wrestling match. What can you say? Uh, then Flair works over the legs of Asuka again, setting up for the figure eight. Kind of, They begin to, to figure out stuff. It's not, it's not as kind of clunky. Charlotte Flair, every so often, does have that clunky match. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Charlotte Flair gets shoved off that top rope. Whoa, was that ever a bad drop and bump that she took? Um, Asuka again gets into a pinning situation. You'll see eventually kicks out. Charlotte was just having a tough time with Asuka. As Asuka's great. Asuka has to miss Charlotte. Asuka miss missing Charlotte. And red! An homage to the crimson mask her father always wore. And then Asuka just went for a whole bunch of submissions. Some of them. Oh, she went for an arm bar. It really did look like, like she tweaked Flair's arm for that for a second. Now the triangle, again, from there is the triangle chokes and arm bars. Eventually, Charlotte Flair does hit the spear in the figure eight. But Kyrie Singh, again, does that. Insane elbow from the top rope right onto a fully extended bridging Charlotte Flair. Oh, there's no way that ends well. But this, folks, with a death to finish again, this was a crab cake and mock tender thick because of the tough and tough match. My cat's just stalking around. Maybe. You want to go on YouTube? No, no she, she, she knows I was going to pick her up, too. She doesn't like YouTube. She's camera shy. There she goes. Tail in the air and everything. This is her house. I just... I don't know. I'm here. I exist for her pleasure, I guess. I don't know. But then uh, we had the Street Profits come out, and Kelly Kelly was there. <laughs> Profits, you should not be doing anything with Kelly Kelly, folks. Kelly Kelly is a respected mom here. Although you would never know that by the way Kelly Kelly looks. Hot paper. Milf. Ugh, I digress. I'd like to go out with Kelly Kelly, but she's married and has kids, though. So not for me. Uh, Rick Moss comes out, and I was shocked. Riddick Moss. I haven't seen him. Like, they're pulling up everyone from NXT. Right, Chispa? Gonna get pulled up from NXT? No. She's stalking around. She knows it's about sight time for her soon. Uh, Riddick Moss accompanies Mojo Rally. Uh, Mojo Rally takes a hunt. No way, Jose. I don't know. I, I blinked and it was over. So I'll tell you what. It's okay. This, this, this the whole thing with No Way Jose is not like super jobber, and Riddick Moss is there. This is a ham sandwich of a match. It, it wasn't much. 
Um, Mojo Rally, he, he does his kind of typical moves, very brawling, very physical moves. Uh, no way Jose just kind of eats everything. He does that, that like, power, that force girl sign where he presses him up and literally, like, throws him down. That looks pretty cool. This match was good. It was, it was, it was a ham sandwich of a match. And again, after like, like, like this, it kind of gets slow. And then our truth was one was one of the revilers with no way, Jose, no way, Jose. And he does the most devastating move in all professional wrestling: the roll up. He rolled up Mojo Rally as a surprise. Mojo Rally wasn't expecting that. He gets pinned, and then and so our truth is a twenty four seven champion for all of like twenty five seconds. Mojo Rally is furious. Riddick Moss kicks. Our truth doesn't allow him to escape. Mojo Rally does that, that, that assisted gorilla press slam, and Mojo retains. Ah, it's different. Our truth has to tranquil a little bit. This in itself was a look. It was it was okay. It was a again. It's kind of getting over our truth. It's really a can of soup. This was kind of odd because then we saw Lana versus Liv Morgan. And oh boy, did we see parts of Liv Morgan? Liv Morgan, like Brazilian waxes, folks. We almost saw all of Liv Morgan. At least the lower half of Liv Morgan. She has that new outfit. It's going to take some time to warm up to it. I do miss seeing the happy go lucky, crazy heel Liv Morgan when she would come out with her. Cut off belly shirt and yoga pants that were all cut up. That was kind of her look in NXT. It translated pretty good to the main roster now with like stalker lesbian Liv Morgan. It's not as good, I guess. No, maybe I'm just used to the old Liv Morgan. I think when I did see, was it Liv Morgan? I think it was Liv Morgan actually came here to Daytona Beach. I think she was like getting a hot dog, or, or, or I saw her. I think I was entering the arena. She was kind of in the concession area. I don't know if she was getting a soda or how to use the bathroom because I, I do know that they have like kind of shared bathrooms between the superstars. And basically, oh, 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 oh. no, 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 oh, come here. Look for making an appearance. You haven't been on in a while. Hello, folks. Yes. What do you think of, of the new Liv Morgan? <gasps> you gave Liv Morgan the, the middle claw again? You're just looking so goofy. Yeah. So Liv Morgan, she, she slaps. What? What was that you're saying? Oh! Morgan just got slapped by Lana like that slapped me. Ouch, that hurt. Hmm. Just shake that off. Um, this was an okay match. I mean, Lana, Lana has, Lana's okay. She's not a bad wrestler. Uh, Lana still came out looking like Miss Marvel. Live in all black. I know they have the new movie, and I just saw it out. Birds of Prey, I think, is coming out. I don't... I'm not a big fan of doing, like, cross-promotional stuff. Mainly because I'm used to the way certain wrestlers look. For... Lana's not necessarily a Miss Marvel person. I can kind of see it, but when it's that obvious where even I can tell, and I don't know if Liv is going to do the same thing, or is she, again, if she's stalker lesbian woman. I have no idea. But again, oh, Liv also got tossed off the top rope too. They're taking some nasty bumps, and Liv's Liv's had a history of concussions, mainly when Brie Bella just flattened the head. I don't even think it was the head. I think she had like the off button. If you get hit here hard enough, that's the off switch. 
but it was okay. I mean, kind of really basic wrestling moves from Lana. Lana was never known to be a great thing. And Liv was definitely carrying the match, and so Liv hit that slingshot flatliner. That looks good, though. It was an okay match. The histrionics of it's okay. If this is a blow-off, uh, I don't know about it. It, it was... Uh, a can of soup. Remember really the last match? It was Rowan versus a jobber. Um, he just kicked the jobber out of the ring, beat him up a little bit. This honestly mauled him. Uh, eventually did hit the Iron Claw Slam, and then he was talking to the cage. Now this is getting old. I liked it when they did the new stuff, but now they're going back who Rowan beats up Jobber and then talks to Cage. This is, is, is just got old. I, I like the fact that they were kind of going on a new thread with him. I want to see him stick the Jobber's hand in the cage and watch the Jobber get bit. That would have been interesting. I still say there's a skunk in that cage. But this is just some old Rowan beating up people. Oh, it's a piece of toast. Then in under two minutes, Edge comes to the ringside. He cuts a promo. He's so happy to be back. Uh, he gets confronted by Randy Orton. Edge eats a RKO and a couple of chair shots. Again, pretty safely done. Randy Orton is the best at that. Uh, Randy Orton does tease a neck break. Oops, there we go. I knew I was going to be close. I think like half of this one free service I get is okay. But yeah, so. Randy Orton puts one chair underneath Edge's head, takes the other chair. You can tell it was chair on chair contact. Edge is probably fine. Probably one of the safest chair shots to the head that I've probably ever seen. And that was Monday Night Raw. Overall, ooh, this is tough. There were a lot of bad matches, there was a lot of wrestling. Like, the good was really good. The bad was just terrible, though. I'll give it a ham sandwich of a raw. And that was raw in a nutshell. Um, I'll post this up as soon as I can. I know, again, because of work, I had to kind of do things early, so hopefully this will go up shortly. Then later tonight, you'll have my NWA and Impact Review. And maybe by then, because sometimes Impact can be kind of long sometimes, and they do a lot of stuff, I'll figure out who won at the respective NWA pay-per-views and Worlds Clyde. I know Rhea Ripley won, so I just have to figure out who else won, and I'll let you know how Dr. Tom did with those two pay-per-views, which I cannot see. Other than that, I'd like to thank everyone for watching, and I'll see everyone well, later. Bye!